Drumsticks, let's talk about it. So this is part two of a little mini series I put together called Drumsticks and Dishwashers. Hopefully you saw Dishwasher yesterday. If not, man, I wanna encourage you to go back and check that out. What we talked about is how, man, it can be really tempting in this time that we're kind of forced to isolate, to kind of get in that unhealthy habit of isolation. But what we talked about is how uh, God wired us up to be in connection and relationship with one another. And you could use this time to isolate or you can use this time to really um, dive into the appreciation that you have for all those people that maybe you're not getting to see face to face. And so um, I gave a shout out to somebody and, and kind of walked us through that. Man, definitely want to encourage you to check that out. Um, I had a lot of fun making that. But today we're going to wrap that series up. And, and today we're talking about drumsticks. Now, let me kind of tell you uh, before we get into that and, and, and address the, the surrounding here. So obviously I'm not in the uh, barn that I was in yesterday or in the truck like I normally am, or even in my office. This is um, my garage and this is pretty much quickly become my favorite or one of my favorite places um, to be. As you can see, man, we've got some toys out here and uh, man, me and my son love coming out here and just, uh, you know, just, you get just to be a man out here, right? Like there's just something, you, as soon as you walk into here, it's just like, like it smells like man. It's just, you, just you're, you become a beast when you walk in here. Like we'll do some, some workouts in here. We'll work on the, the, the go-kart. We got drums back here and all that good stuff. And so uh, to be honest with you, this is really where a lot of uh, my recent ideas for series and things like that have, have sparked. And so um, today we're, we're addressing drumsticks. Now, we're in this season right now where, um, man, connection is limited. And not only that, our schedules and our routines, if you're like me, has been completely uh, just stripped away and disheveled. Uh, we're not allowed to go to school. We're not allowed to go many places. We're not even allowed to go into work. We're having to work from home, all these different things. And so you're probably like me, finding yourself at a point where everything that you're used to doing has changed. Everything is, is completely different. And if you're not careful, then, and I've struggled with this on many occasions, but if you're not careful, sometimes we get so caught up in the things that we do that that becomes who we are, right? I am a youth pastor, that is my uh, job title, but that's not necessarily my identity, even though I typically will fall into that. Um, my, my job as a youth pastor, man, it entails many, many things, but the primary thing that, that being a youth pastor for me involves is that I lead our seventh through 12th grade ministry and I host uh, Teen Quest meetings and I host youth group meetings and, and I, I preach Jesus to, to teens and, and we get together and we play games and we eat food and, and we do all these things and that has completely changed. Now, why I do what I do hasn't changed. I'm still on the mission of proclaiming the good news of Jesus and offering help for life's hurts to students. But the way that I go about that has definitely changed, okay? And so, man, if, if we're not careful, we can put our identity, we can put our value and our worth in what we do. Um, and now that I'm not able to do what I, I do normally and I have to change that, if, if I'm not careful, I can start to feel a little bit um, less valuable and a, and a little, you know, slipping into that worthless feeling. And that's that happens when I put all of my value and worth in what I do and not in, in my true identity and who I am. Uh, maybe you are heavily involved in sports and, and now you're not able to do that. You can't meet with your team. You can't go to practices. You can't play in the games. And so if your whole identity was being the football star or, or the tennis star or whatever that looks like, and now that you're not able to do that, who are you? Where does your value come from? What is your worth? Um, and so that brings me to drumsticks. I know you're like, what does this have to do with just dishwashers and drumsticks? So as I mentioned, Noah's drum set is over there. It's not real well lit over there. So that's why we're over here. Otherwise I'd show it to you. Um, but Noah's got several different drumsticks. Um, and these are probably his favorite ones. He, these are his go-to ones. He's got some red ones. He's got some other ones, but these are the ones that he uses primarily. Now, obviously you can tell that they're a little nicked up. They've been used. Um, but these still have a lot of value in them. You can still drum with these. And, and in fact, I would say that these are even broken in a little bit, right? These are good, good drumsticks. You can use these to do what drumsticks are made to do. If I was gonna sell these as drumsticks, they're still valuable. They still hold worth because they can do what they were intended to do. Now, these other ones that I've got, um, and in fact, I gotta be very careful with them. These right here, um, when it comes to being drumsticks, not as valuable. You can tell that these things are pretty beat up. They don't have a lot of life left in them. In fact, this one here, 
um, I gotta be very, very careful with because uh, man, that, that sucker could snap off at any moment. And so um, as drumsticks, man, these really have no value. And so if you were to compare these two and say, okay, well, which one provides the most value as drumsticks? Obviously these do, but if you were to ask me, hey, Aaron, which ones are more valuable to you? The truth is, these are way more valuable to me. In fact, I would give these away. I mean, Noah probably wouldn't appreciate that, but I would give these away. I wouldn't even sell these, and here is why. These are signed. That right there is why these drumsticks are so valuable to me. And so, um, man, my one of my favorite bands, I got the opportunity to meet the drummer at one point. Hey, buddy. Uh, I'm talking about drumsticks. My drumsticks? Yeah. I'll be out there in a second. All right. So, uh, man, I got the opportunity to meet the drummer of one of my favorite bands. In fact, Noah and I uh, got to go to a concert with him, and it was just a really, really cool experience. And so, uh, man, he hooked us up with all this autographed stuff, and so those drumsticks were autographed by one of my favorite drummers. And so they're incredibly valued, valuable to me and, and, and they're priceless. I wouldn't sell those. Um, and, and it's not because they're great drumsticks, it's because of whose name is, is on there. These, these drumsticks have a whole new identity. And so even though these may appear to be good um, and, and, and useful and valuable, sure, to some degree they are, but to me, the ones that are more valuable are the ones that have that drummer's name on them. And so if you'll allow me to, man, let's put a spiritual spin on this. Um, Man, as, 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 as a Christ follower, um, my worth is not in what I do. My worth is in whose name is written on my heart, whose name is written on my soul. Uh, man, the, the moment that I confess that Jesus is Lord and that Jesus died on the cross uh, for my sins and for your sins, that Jesus defeated death, that becomes my identity. Um, and, and, and the amazing thing about this is, uh, man, God doesn't require that in order for us to gain that value, to gain that identity, that we have to get all cleaned up first. I mean, it doesn't matter how much I repaint these, the moment these things enter into life and they enter into the drum set again, they're gonna get nicked up. You're gonna see it. These, and there's nothing to hide here, but they're still more valuable because of the signature, because of the name that's on them, because of the identity that they now have. Um, and so, man, your, your worth, I just want to encourage uh, encourage you with that today, man. Your worth, your value, even though a lot of the things that you do has been taken away to some degree, um, man, if you are a Christ follower, then that is where your identity lies. That is uh, where your value comes from, man. And, and the beautiful thing about this is, is that you can, you can come to God just as you are. You can come to God broken, and it doesn't matter if this is what you see in the mirror. It doesn't matter if that's what other people are focusing on. That right there is what's important. That's right there is, is what matters. And so when I'm wrestling with, man, I'm not able to, to do youth ministry the way that I, maybe I would even like to or the way that I feel comfortable, um, I, can, I can, if I'm not careful, slip into feeling you know, worthless and, and invaluable. And so I gotta remind myself that, you know what, no, it doesn't matter how broken or chipped up or ineffective I am um, in, in the things that, that I put my worth in. It, it doesn't matter if I'm not able to do the things that I would like to do what matters Ultimately, where my value comes from is the name uh, that I have. And I'm marked by Christ. I'm marked by Jesus. And that's where my identity lies. And so I don't know where you're at today, where you stand with Jesus. But I just want to encourage you, man, if you've never put your faith in Jesus, would you consider that? Um, and man, would you consider the fact that God loves you so much? It doesn't matter uh, what status you're in. Maybe you're, you're sitting there saying, yeah, I'm, I'm not that bad. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Maybe you're like this and, and you're beat up and, and broken. Man, the, the beautiful thing about the gospel is that God loved us so much that he didn't wait for us to get cleaned up. He didn't, ex you know, he didn't require us to, to get it cleaned up or, or get it all right. He came to us. He, he met us right where we were at and, and he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for us to take our place on the cross. And then he defeated death so that you and I could have eternal life, so that you and I can have life and life to the full. Um, and so, man, I want you to consider that today, man. If you're watching this and you've never put your faith in Jesus, would you consider that God loves you that much, that he would do that for you? And, and uh, man, you don't got to get cleaned up first, man. Uh, you, we, we can't transform our own lives. If we could, we would have done it by now probably, right? Um, Jesus, the moment that he gets a hold of your life, man, he can make you new. He can take you. Man, without this signature, guys, without this signature, these are just banged up, worthless, throw it in the trash drumsticks. But now they have new identity. These drumsticks have been transformed. They're not worthless. They're priceless. 
And so, man, Jesus is in the business of transformation. If I'm doing my job as a Christ follower, then it's not to make, you know, just elaborate videos or come up with the best words that I can and, and, and preach the, the most amazing message. Man, my job, as, a, as if I'm doing my job well as a Christ follower, as a youth pastor, is just to point you to where I found rescue, man, to point you uh, to the one who can transform and to the one who can save. I can't say anything to save you. I can't come up with an elaborate video to save you. But what I can do is tell you about the one who saved me, man. I can point you to where you can go. If this is you, man, where you can go and, and get that signature. And, and that's only found in Jesus. And so maybe today you would consider that. Maybe today um, you would just uh, pray. And, and in your head, there's no specific words that you would say. But maybe you would just tell God, God, I, I confess that, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus died on the cross for me. Um, that I confess that, that he met me right where I'm at. And I want him to transform my life. And I believe that he has the power and the ability to do that because he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he defeated death and he, he's, he's alive. And, and so God, I confess that Jesus is Lord. I'm asking him to be my identity. I want his name. I want to be marked by Christ. I want him to transform my life. God, take me from worthless to priceless through your son, Jesus. And so guys, that's my drumstick talk, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this two-part series. And uh, man, stay tuned Sunday night at 6 p.m. We're gonna do as much of a regular Teen Quest as we can online. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I think my lovely wife, Tina, is gonna join me in that talk. And so you definitely wanna be tuned in at Sunday at 6 p.m. for that. So with that, man, I'm gonna get out of here and uh, we'll talk to you later.